Hi, morning everyone. Welcome to episode 75 of the Knitting Expat podcast. My name is Mina and I'll be your host today. Um, as you can see, I am still in London. If you've watched previous episodes, you'll know that I'm in the UK at the moment visiting family and friends and just, um, I've been here for the summer pretty much. For the last four weeks I've been in the UK now and it feels like, I don't know, it feels like it's gone really fast but at the same time it feels like it's been a while. Um, I am looking forward to going home and uh, seeing my cats again. But yeah, so for those of you who don't know, I live in the Middle East in Bahrain, a little tiny island in the Gulf, and um, I live there with my husband and our two cats, who are usually, or one of them anyway, one of my two cats is usually my co-host on this podcast. If you go back a few episodes, you'll see uh, he's in pretty much all of them. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, anyway, so welcome, my name is Mina. You can find me online as Mina86 on Ravelry, as Mina Philip on Instagram. You can find the podcast group on Ravelry as the Knitting Expat Podcast, and you can find show notes for this and all previous episodes at knittingexpat.wordpress.com. Um, you can find links to all of that below in the description box on YouTube and um, in the show notes and in the episode thread for this episode so you should be able to find the links and everything in all three places for wherever else you can find me um so yeah i just want to start out by saying thank welcome to new and returning viewers sorry i'm feeling a bit croaky this morning so i may have to do that occasionally um just to clear my throat but welcome to all new and returning viewers thank you so much for checking me out and or checking out the podcast and hanging out with me today. These last couple of weeks have been slightly unusual in terms of my podcasting schedule. It's been a little bit crazy. Um, last week was an unusual, like a non-standard episode. I just did a yarn haul and um, and this week should be more of a standard episode and I'll talk a bit more about next week towards the end of the podcast but basically there's not going to be a regular podcast next week but there will be a couple of videos going up between now and the following week when I podcast next. Um, and I'll explain a bit more about why I won't be podcasting next week later, so stay tuned. Um, first up we have coupon codes, we have all the same coupon codes as we've had last time, there are about eight I believe at the moment that are currently still running, um, oh wait no sorry one of them is now expired, so there's seven that are still running and I will, they are all linked in the show notes and they are all linked in the episode thread so you should be able to easily access all of those online shops and support the lovely people who have provided coupon codes for the podcast. If I sit here and read through all of them, it will just take too long and um, I don't want to bore everybody. But there are coupon codes available for bag makers, yarn dyers and all other sorts of um, goodies to do with knitting. So let's move on to finished objects. So first up I have the Shire Stones hat, which was, was a pattern on my own design, which should have been out by now. It is completely ready and it's just purely down to lack of time to sit down with my computer and just do this. Um, but I knit another one for my dad. Let me see that there. Oh, there we go. That's better. So it's just a simple textured pattern. It's a double folded brim. Um, so it's extra cushy and warm around the ears and the forehead. And, uh, and I didn't do this one quite as deep. I did one less repeat of the pattern um, in the hat than on the previous versions I did because I think my dad would prefer more of a beanie style hat than a slightly slouchy. So this will be perfect for him. I haven't given it to him yet, obviously, because I wanted to show it to you guys. Um, and I will get this pattern out this week. Tomorrow and Friday, I have zero plans. I am not planning on leaving the house. <laughs> at least not for a long period of time, not going anywhere particular. So um, I'm actually really looking forward to having two days of not doing anything because I've been so busy um, and there's just been a few things I've been wanting to do and I just have not had the opportunity to do them. So I'm looking forward to having a couple of days at home and I will get this pattern out this week, I promise. I know people have been asking about it, so this will be out soon. Um, and yeah, so this is the version I knit for my dad. It is out of Cascade 220 in a sort of chocolatey brown colour, I can't remember the exact um, colour number, I didn't write it down. It's left I had a leftover skein from when I knit my dad his sweater, the time the Henley for men, and um, or the men's Henley, I can't remember the name of the pattern exactly, but I showed it on, not last week, the week before's podcast, episode 73, because I had to repair it, 
So I brought the extra skein with me to repair it and then I thought I'd make him a hat for the winter out of the leftovers. So that's that. That was a nice and quick and easy knit project. It was great for like traveling on trains and stuff. Then the next thing that I have that's finished was also a work in progress last week. <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting fibers in my throat. Um, a pair of shorty socks and I don't normally knit shorty socks. I normally prefer long socks or longer than this anyway. And um, I don't know, I just thought I'd give shorty socks a go. And plus I had other plans for the leftovers of this yarn that I wanted to do. And this pair of shorty socks took up 47 grams of yarn, so I had plenty left over. This is knit out of Koiku KPPM, and it comes in 50 gram skeins. So I really could have just done this out of one skein, but I pulled from two different balls, and as you can see, one is definitely more saturated than the other. So this one's more saturated than this one, but it's fine. I mean, they're still quite obviously the same colorway. And it was color number so Koigu KPPM, they don't name their colorways, but they do have like a, a, a code. So this one was P16343, this colorway. And, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% convinced about these, to be perfectly honest. Um, they fit fine, but they are a little bit bunchy at the front versus, you know, the back is okay. So I'm not sure, maybe they'll wear better when they're in shoes, but at the moment I'm not 100% convinced. So I'd be interested to see what's, to hear what your favourite like short socks patterns are. Because I wouldn't mind having a few pairs of short socks, it's just I've never been a fan of knitting them because of the whole bunching at the front issue. Um, maybe it's just one of those ones where, you know, for short socks you have to do a heel flap and gusset to avoid the bunching at the front. I don't know, let me know your thoughts. Um, I'd be interested to hear that. But that's progress on those ones, or finished those ones. Then, um, I have two other finished objects to show you, but in actual fact I have finished more things, I just can't show you um, those finished objects yet. So I'm not even going to talk about most of them. One I will mention, but um, I can't show it to you. But another finished object that I have is this hat that I have knit out of, this was hand spun that was sent to me by the lovely Sarah who does the Reluctant Sisters podcast with her two sisters and um, Sarah and I met for the first time last September about a year ago almost um, when I went to New York and we got we'd been in touch and we decided to meet up and do a swap and stuff and I've met up with her, her and her sister um, another when I was back in January as well so um, so yeah, Sarah's always been really generous and like gifted me her hand spun, we've done swaps before, so this was one of the skeins that she'd um, spun up and gifted me, it was this lovely sort of gradient rainbow, um, it was a 50 gram uh, skein, so I knew it'd be perfect for a hat, but the thing is, it's, it's a sparkle yarn, as you can probably tell, it's very sparkly, and um, it's also quite a scratchy yarn, it's not the softest for a hat. So I knew this was, especially for me, I know I'm quite sensitive on my forehead and I, I, I get breakouts and stuff if it's if the yarn on my head is too scratchy. So I knew this was gonna be too scratchy to just be against my head on its own. So what I did was, I did um, a folded brim again, but what I did was I used a softer yarn for the first part of the brim and then when I got to the point where I was about halfway through the ribbing I switched to the colour for the hat and I don't mind that a bit of this grey is showing through to be honest because I didn't want the scratchiness against my skin so it's not going to fit quite right because of my bun at the moment but you can see it fits I mean it would, it would cover my ears perfectly without the bun um, so yeah so now my head doesn't get my forehead isn't getting scratched by the itchy itchy yarn and I've got the pretty pretty gradient on the outside um, this is going to be a, a pattern that I will be putting out at some point I'm not going to say when exactly I I, I, just, I need to make another version because I want to make a few modifications based off of how this one turned out um, there are just a couple of things I'm going to be doing differently nothing major but the pattern is mostly there and um, and yeah and there's going to be a matching pair of socks with the same sort of pattern on it as well that'll be released at the same time there'll be a collect uh, a pair of patterns together and um and yeah so that's that one i'm really happy with how this one turned out and it was really fun to knit and the final finished object that i have to show you 
is oh sorry i should have mentioned the the hand spun for this the fiber came from uh classy squid fiber company i believe that was the right one uh that was the one that it was and it was it was really lovely and i still had the end of the gradient left which was a really sort of dark purple black color so i didn't quite go all the way to the end i might actually make a pom-pom to come on the top of that because i think it'd be quite cute um oh, sorry i just got it's like fuzz flying around and the last finished object that i can actually show you is um a pair of socks and this is the yarn is by i've got the tag for this one here is by yuhu knits and this is Georgina, who I don't believe she's dying yarn at the moment. She was in Canada at the time when um, when I got this yarn. But um, I think she's in the UK or Ireland now. And this is the details of the yarn in the back. Focus, there we go. And it's called Casually Interrupted by a Rainbow, which I absolutely loved the name. And uh, yeah, I'm, I was really looking forward to knitting these up. I was kind of saving up the yarn. Um, for this one but what I ended up doing was when I caked up the balls I didn't really pay much close attention and I realized I'd caked them up and um, if I because I pull from the center I realized that doing that would mean that one um, on one side the rainbow would go in the opposite order so it starts at the purple ends at the red and then on one leg it will start at the red and end at the purple I really don't mind and as it happened um, the purple, the rainbow section and the grey sections in between are roughly the same amount. Um, so they're about nine to ten rows each. So it actually worked out pretty perfectly. So that you know when I'm work, because I work my socks two at a time. So when I'm on a grey section for one sock, I'm working the rainbow on the other, and then when I get to the grey, I'm working the rainbow on the first one. So, and you know throughout the whole thing I'm always working on a rainbow section and always working on a grey section which meant it didn't get boring. I wasn't sat there knitting the boring grey section, not that it's really boring but you know it's more it keeps the interest when you're actually knitting. So that was really fun and then I just popped in some um, sunny yellow heels um, in, in these lime brown sockies and yeah and down to the toe. I almost almost got to the red on the oh actually no I didn't get anywhere near to the red but I was hoping to get to the red on the toe before finishing but I didn't quite get that far but anyway I'm really happy with how these have turned out and yeah super chuffed that I finally got to use the yarn and it's another pair of socks for the Canada cow or another entry technically I guess um all right and the last finished object I have which I can't actually show you is the design project that I'm working on for Rib magazine that I told you about. So I finished the hat and it used one skein, or just, there's actually a bit left over from one skein, so that's what's left over from the yarn. The yarn actually arrived whilst I was, there we go, the yarn actually arrived whilst I was in Finland, more about that later, but um, and that in itself was a bit of a plot for getting here. But um, again, I'll talk more about that in acquisitions when I show you the yarn, all the rest of the yarn. Um, but that was also finished and I think I finished that yesterday So moving on to works in progress. I only have one work in progress to show you because like I said I finished that hat yesterday. I had nothing else on the needles And so I just cast something on yesterday when I when I headed out but first off I'll show you the two um, The blanket blocks I'm working on a pinwheel scrap blanket, which is a pattern of my own design um, and you can find that on Ravelry it's now available and um and yeah, so I've been working on it and I designed the pattern purely because, well, simply because I wanted something, I wanted a blanket project that was going to be portable, but I didn't want to make lots of little squares. I wanted something that was going to be easy to join together, not complicated, just, you know, easy and relaxed and fun. And a good opportunity to play with colour and to plan if you want to or not if you don't want to. Like, it's completely up to you how you do this. Um, and there are some people who are knitting up versions where they're like being really really planned with their colour placements and others who are just going randomly or you know each square is themed around something um, that mean you know something special something that means something special to them and all that sort of stuff so it's really interesting ways of going about it um it gives there's a lot of scope for making it your own essentially anyway so up until now i've shown you three finished blocks i brought enough yarn to do six blocks with me enough mini skeins to do six blocks with me so I've shown you three finished blocks and I have two more finished ones to show you. So there's this one and I can't remember which order these were finished in but I think this was the next one. 
and these are all mini skeins that were given to me by my friend Josie from Dubai and then there's also this one you can tell these two are together they are in they're a set of inversibles and um, so when you knit them up as socks this one is mostly pink with thin grey stripes and this one is mostly grey with thin pink stripes which I thought was really fun and I just put them on opposite sides of the block otherwise I thought it would be a bit too much pink and grey on one side but yeah so that's those so that's five out of the six blocks done and yesterday I started block six so this is how far I am I am three triangles in block six and this is still still with the minis from Josie I think once I finish this block then I'm finished with all of the minis that she sent me and yeah so that's that's where I got to yesterday and that's literally all I've knit on at the moment um I haven't started anything new I need to start the next project for my rib magazine designs um so I can get those written up and I have a bit of a deadline for those as well. I might well my purse. My deadline really is the end of the month, so I need to get cracking on that. And that's just because of delays of yarn and stuff like that, it's worked out this way. But not a problem. I like I said, the designs I'd already figured out, I just need to knit them, so it shouldn't be an issue. Alright, I'm gonna take a quick break and then I'll be back with you with acquisition. Okay, so before acquisitions, I realised I completely forgot something. Spinning. <laughs> Clearly I'm still new at this so um, remembering to talk about spinning on the podcast is going to probably take me a while but I have some progress to talk about. So for those of you who don't know I went to Fibre East earlier at the end of July and um, I picked up a Bogwe hand spinner from Lowlands Legacy who, by the way, they got in touch with me on YouTube, they left me a comment to say that when they got back to the Netherlands after being in the UK for Fiber East, they've been inundated with messages from you guys um, inquiring and placing orders for hand spinners. So thank you, you guys, so much. Um, that's amazing. Uh, I'm so glad to hear that so many of you have been interested and that, you know, that you've gone to them and messaged them. And yeah, now that they're back, I'm, pretty I'm hoping that most of you will have heard back from them about that. Um, but yeah, you can check out episode 73 of my uh, Fiber East vlog, which is also on this channel, um, for more information about the spinner and how it works. So I did a demonstration on episode 73, and there's also a demonstration in the Fiber East vlog as well. But essentially what it is, this is the spinner, and you attach the yarn to here, and then, you know, you spin. It's a, you know, it's a hand spin, it's not a drop spindle, so it's a, it's a different technique for spinning but you get the same sort of results um so i i finished i applied the first half of the fiber that it came with a sample mini bat of fiber it was about 15 grams so i finished um come on, this the first little mini section what i was planning on doing was doing um i was gonna you know spin the singles half and half and then apply them together as a two ply but what, what I realised was my first half of singles was very thick and thin, like it was very thick at the beginning and it got more, a lot more consistent and finer towards the end. Um, and then my second half of singles, which is still on this toilet roll, um, was a lot more consistently fine throughout. And I didn't want to apply this with this because I realised that I probably had more yardage in the singles in this one than I did in the first half. So what I did was I looked up how to do an Andean plying bracelet. I believe that's what it's called. I'd heard it mentioned on a couple of other podcasts where they spin. And so I looked that up and did that and plied that way. And that's how I ended up with this little mini skein. It's about 15 metres of what I would say is roughly a worsted weight throughout possibly you know thinner in some places but um I'm quite happy with that I haven't soaked it yet to set it or anything but I haven't had a chance but um but yeah I'm just trying to pull out a strand to show you I mean this is a thinner bit excuse the terrible nails I really need to get rid of this nail polish there's a finer bit there and I'm really quite happy with how this turned out I never really thought I would spin something that would actually be usable 
so um this is quite exciting for me to be quite honest a little bit it's trying to focus on my face so i need to cover my face come on there we go you can see those two strands there so it's not too bad and i'm really quite enjoying the experience but like i said because i'm doing the um andy implying bracelet I need to be able to have a, a big enough chunk of time to sit down and ply it all at once. I can't just take it off and put it back on my hand. So um, that's why I haven't spun this this half yet, applied this half yet, sorry. Um, I had wanted to do that yesterday, but I just didn't have enough time. And um, so I didn't get around to that yet. But I'm hoping to get around to that before I head back home. because it would be nice to get them both done while I'm here. So that's my spinning progress so far. And I've had a couple of people ask me to do like a tutorial video or something. I've already mentioned I, I will I will consider doing that once I've had more experience with it and I feel more confident in doing a tutorial video about it. I definitely don't have any issues with doing one. Um, I just don't feel like doing one right now when I'm only still getting the hang of how to use it and drafting and stuff like that is necessarily going to be particularly helpful to anybody else. Um, but if you just want a demonstration on how it works, like I said, you can check out episode 73 and also the Fibreeze vlog explains it as well. Okay, so now let's move on to acquisitions. I have actually got quite a few things to show you because um, I had a few packages come in whilst I was away in Finland and um, I also picked up some stuff in Finland. So there's quite a few things to show you. First up, I'll show you the package that came through which from Eric from Six Plus Twine who sent me the yarn support for the patterns that I'm designing for Rev Magazine. And the yarn has been kindly provided by um, Lisa of Northbound Knitting. Sorry, get it out of the plastic. So this is the beautiful, lovely, lovely yarn she sent, or that Eric sent me. And so it's Northbound Knitting, it's the MCN DK, so it's 80, 10, 10, Sip, Wash, Marina, Cashman, Nylon, um, 230 yards and 100 grams in the Metallurgy colorway, which is this beautiful sort of greys and sort of bronzy brown colors. It's just really, really lovely. Come on, there we go. Really, really lovely colors. And I love, I've been wanting to try out this colorway um, for a while, but northbound knitting her yarn is quite difficult to get so um so yeah so i was really excited when eric said that she was going to be doing the yarn support and this was going to be the colorway i was like this is perfect <laughs> so i'm really looking forward to it i need to get winding up the next couple of skeins so i can um get started on the next project i'm i'm thinking i am probably going to end up with a skein left over so i'm not entirely sure what i'm going to do with the extra skein at the moment i may use it for a future giveaway or another design i'm not entirely sure yet but we will see um so that's the first thing and this like i said there was a quite a bit of um drama around this there was firstly there was the canadian postal strike which delayed things a bit initially and then Eric was away for a while and then I was traveling um, to London and we weren't sure where to send it and point is it got here it's fine and we're all good but it was a lot more drama than it really needed to be at the time well I felt that it needed to be but um, like I said all good um, I also got a lovely package from a viewer of the podcast Kieran who sent me some lovely goodies. He, he messaged me a while back now asking if he could send me some mini skeins. But not only did he send me mini skeins, um, you know, they're not really mini, they're like chunky skeins. He sent me 20 minis, or maxi skeins as I should say. Um, but this one in particular really stood out to me is his hand spun, which I thought was really sweet and really special and really consistent, really, really nicely done. Um, so I'm looking forward to knitting that into a square. But there's loads of different yarns in here as well, which he's um, given me sort of like a, a, a page labeling out what the different yarns are. So there's 20 different um, minis in there, which will be fun to knit into my blanket. There's also good timing because I'm almost out of minis for blanket squares. So this came at a very good time. He also sent me a couple of skeins of sock yarn from Tiger, which I had heard that Tiger was selling sock yarn, but um, every time I go into the Tiger near where my parents live, they don't have any sock yarn. 
so um so thank you for that because i've been wanting to try out some of that and so this is a good opportunity that was perfect and then on top of all that he sent me some teas as well but um he also went ahead and sent me a turtle uh i think that's what's called a turtle spindle which i thought was so sweet and i was totally gobsmacked by this because i was and uh, I've never used one, obviously. I mean, the Bogway is the first spinner I've used. So this is going to be an interesting learning curve to figure out how to work this. But I'm looking forward to giving this a go when I get back from my trip as well. So it comes apart, so it's great for travel. You know, it's a flat packs, essentially. And it goes together nice and easily. If I don't mess it up. And, yeah. So I'm looking forward to giving that a go. And yeah, so thank you so much, Kieran, for that. That was really special. And the last package that came in the mail whilst I was away was from the lovely Amy Florence, who does the Stranded Dye Works, who has the Stranded Dye Works yarn business. And she's only just recently, I think it's been a couple of weeks that, since she's um, gone full time with her yarn dyeing, which is really, really exciting. So congratulations, Amy. And uh, and she also has a podcast, the Stranded podcast. If you haven't checked that out, make sure you do. It's really fun, and she has a lot of great energy as well. And she contacted me, contacted me to see if I'd be interested in trying out some of her yarn and using some for a giveaway and stuff like that. And I said, well, of course I would. And she sent me two really beautiful skeins on her Oasis sock base, which is a 75-25 superwash merino nylon. And these are the two skeins that she sent me. How beautiful are these? I mean, I know I'm not much of a pink fan, but this one is really speaking to me. Like, I really like this one. Um, I think it'd make really fun sort of socks or accessory of some kind. Anyway, this one is called Street Art, and it is very reminiscent. It does remind me of sort of like street graffiti and the sort of bright colours. There's really nice sort of like pops of yellow here as well. And uh, yeah, and this 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 base is seventy five twenty five, but it is so soft. You I, you know I'd swear it was like an eighty twenty blend, and it's four hundred twenty five meters per hundred grams. So this one's street art, and this one is called flamboyant, which I think is actually a perfect name for this yarn colorway. It's, it's the you know the colors are very flamboyant, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I love the. Like I said, I'm not usually a big fan of pink, but. I think the pink balance with the orange and the, the more darker tones of the the black, um, so like the, the purpley blue and the, the browns at the end here kind of balances out quite nicely. So so there are instances where I don't mind pink, <laughs> but um, I'm very picky about the, about that, <laughs> if that makes sense. I don't like all kinds of pink or in all situations. Um, Sorry, I feel that was a bit tangenty, but that's also 425 meters, same base. But yeah, so thank you so much, Amy. That is really, really special. And um, I'm really looking forward to trying one of these out and using one for a giveaway in the future. Um, I haven't figured out what that giveaway will be yet, but it will go into the prize pile and it will be used in the future. Oh, and this is her card. So that's oh, Stranded Dye Works and got her information on the back. I'm just going to cover up the phone number because I'm not sure if she wants that all over the internet. And there you go, got her email addresses and website and stuff. And there we go. And right, I think we're finally moving on to the stuff that I got in Finland. So most of you know by now that last week I was in Helsinki in Finland with my husband Perry and um, I posted a vlog about that trip at the end of last week and um or over the weekend actually so make sure you go and check that out if you want to know what we got up to i'm not really going to go over the whole thing of everything that we did while we were there because to be honest i pretty much covered everything in that video and um so you can go check that out it's about 20 minutes and i hope I hope you guys enjoy it so far the feedback's been pretty good so um so yeah so let's just dive into what i got so first up um I have to say, whenever we travel somewhere new, we always love to check out like the local sweets or the local local to the country sweets and um, snack stuff. So um, and we ended up there was a few things that we really liked. We got small bags of initially just to try out, and then we went back and bought bigger bags of them to take home with us. And then <laughs> and then so the, so this is what we ended up getting. 
this big bag of gummy sweets which are really really delicious and perry was like they taste a lot like um straws or that they have that same sort of texture and consistency as straws that you get in the uk and if you're from the uk you will know what i mean and if you're not it's just a type of gummy sweet um and we got this initially because we just love the name and i just thought that was hilarious and i'm probably saying this wrong but it sounds like superly poofy and it just i don't know the name amused me and it remind looked a bit like maltesers so we get gave those go they're not like maltesers at all they're not like a malt honeycomb sort of texture inside it's like it's almost like a wafer biscuit inside but it's still really delicious and then of course big bar of chocolate because this chocolate is delicious so we got a big bar to take home and ration <laughs> slowly um it was really funny because perry went back on friday he went back to bahrain and when he was packing his bags i was asking him do you want to take the sweets back with you or do you want me to bring them back and he didn't have much space left after he packed a whole bunch of stuff that i gave him to take back like everything i bought at fiber east and some other things that i've bought since being here so um he was like would you mind taking it because you know, i don't have space then a couple of days later, I think he realised his mistake and he was like, is there going to be anything left for me by the time you get back where you're going to have eaten it all? I said, no, no, I'll be good. I won't open it until I get back and we can we can share them. So these are our the sweet goodies that we got <laughs> whilst in Finland, which will hopefully last us a while when we get back. There's quite a lot there. But um, <clears throat> whilst we were there... Um, I saw this poster, it was, I, I assume it was advertising for some sort of jazz event. But as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, it looks like Derek. And for those of you who've seen the podcast before, and or have seen my Instagram pictures, and have seen photos of Derek, you will totally get what I mean. Because this is just that sort of surprise shocked face that Derek has. I mean, is that owl not just like, basically Derek? I mean, that's just, just my little baby. But anyway, so I picked up the little leaflet because I just thought that was cute. I think I just miss them a lot. Um, right, so, went to Finland, I bought yarn. <laughs> so, I bought yarn in three places, actually, in, in Helsinki, which was two more places than I expected. Um, I'd always been planning on going to uh, Snur, I think that's how you say it. Is it Snur or Snure? The yarn shop in Helsinki, which is really famous. Or, uh, that I've heard about quite a lot and I had a few a lot of people actually recommend to go there um, and then I bought yarn at the marketplace there's, there's like the central market in Helsinki which we went to and we stumbled across this yarn stall so I bought some yarn there and then on the way to Snor that day that we were going there uh, we, we just happened to walk past another yarn shop so I popped in and had a look there <coughs> Um, I can't remember the name of that one, the yarn shop that we popped into, but it is in the video, so you'll see the name of the shop on the shop front. They had a lot of, it was mostly commercial yarns, nothing wrong with that, but, so I didn't get much there, because I was really hoping to just buy local yarn when I, when I was in Finland, but um, they did have, they were having a sale on their Reggio yarns, so I picked up these two skeins. Regia. I picked up a skein of Regia Perfect um, in colour number 07123. I've never tried a skein of Perfect and I just thought that would be interesting. And you can see that's how it will knit up and it's not like the other ones that I've seen which are all just stripes. This one actually has some sort of like patterning to it as well which I thought was interesting. And I like the reds so I thought that would be fun to work with. And I picked up a skein of Onion Carlos. I think this is from their second design line. I think, I think. And they had a sample of this knit up. This is colour number 03762. And that just gives you an idea of how that will knit up. I think this is from their second design line. Um, so yeah, I picked up a skein of that. Because they were on sale and why not? Um, then, from Snore itself, I picked up only a few things. I didn't get too much from there actually, to be honest. I was very good. Um, like I said, I tried to stick to only local yarns or finish yarns anyway. So I'm not even going to try and pronounce this one. 
by a company called Knit Loves Lair, I think. But I'm not gonna try and pronounce the the name on that because I'm just gonna butcher it. I don't even know where to begin. So um, yeah, that's the label. It is in, oh, I'm trying to read the colorway name and I can't quite make it out. Um, anyway, it is 75 soup washable, 25% nylon, 400 meters in 100 grams. It says hand wash recommended. And this is the colorway name. Again, it's in handwriting and it's in like cursive. So I can read it, but I'm not entirely sure what that, what some of those letters are. So I'm not gonna try and get that wrong. So if someone knows what that is, please let me know. I would be very interested. But it's just this beautiful, rich red color. It's got some nice tonality to it. It's not just the flat red, there's some sort of darker bits and lighter bits in there as well. And I don't really have any red in my stash. I don't really have a lot of red yarn um, in my stash. So I thought this would be a nice addition. And it's, it's a pretty sturdy sock yarn. So this is a 75-25 compared to the yarn from Stranded Dye Works. This one is much softer than this one. This one definitely feels more um, sturdy. Or more like long, more like a regia, I guess, is probably what I should say. But yeah, so I picked up this skein for myself. And then I picked up these two skeins. And uh, this is Tuku wool, fingering, 100% finished wool. And so this, the red one is in color 16. Oh, they're also color 16. Oh no, sorry. 16 is the lot number. The color is 03 Ayuri for the gray. Come on. There we go. And for this one, it's H20 Hocker. Is that right? Is the color number. So I picked up these two. They are Definitely woolly wools. They smell sheepy. Um, it's 50 grams, 195 meters, so it's about a fingering weight. And I thought these two um, would go well together for some sort of colour book project, like hat or mittens or something like that. And I just felt like they belong together. And I got these for you guys as a um, as a prize, which I will talk more about in a bit. Um, I haven't fully sort of put everything together as like a package, so I'm not going to be starting this giveaway yet but I did notice last week when I put up last week's episode um that the YouTube channel has hit you know it's gone over 8,000 subscribers now which is a little bit nuts and a little bit crazy so I wanted to pick up some things in Finland to give away to you guys as prizes as a prize because it seems to, it seems to have become a thing that whenever I hit the next thousand milestone subscribers on YouTube I seem to be traveling so the last few sort of big sort of subscription um, giveaways that I've done, have all, have most of them, or a lot of them, have been travel themed. So I thought, why not do another one, this time based around Finland, because that's where I was when I when it happened. So, um, so yeah, I picked up these two skeins, and then I've got a couple of other ideas of what I'm going to put with it, so I'll show you some of those in a minute. Um, oh, I'll show you one now. One of them being, I picked up a couple of small bars of the milk chocolate, um, which was really delicious which will go in the package as well. And I picked up something else in Finland, which I'll show you in a bit, which will also go into the price package buy. Something, I think, from Fiberese, which I was also gonna throw in and make like a nice big bundle. Um, okay, so the next, the, so going back to the third place that I actually bought yarn from, which was actually the first place I bought yarn. <laughs> Sorry, this is all getting very confusing, I know. Um, so we went to, like I mentioned, the Central Marketplace and there's lots of stores and you, you'll see it in the video and selling all sorts of different hand goods and stuff like that and catering to tourists as well as locals. And we stumbled across this yarn stall and it's Rihi Villa Yarns, Rihi Villa. I'm just going to go with that. And um, they produce local, locally grown and milled sort of finished wools. And they are mostly either undyed or naturally dyed yarns. So that, that was really interesting to me as well. And I went on their website and their website does have an English version. So um, I I link that under the Helsinki video in the description box. But I will link it in the show notes and the episode thread for this video, this episode as well. So you guys can go have a look. 
And so there's loads of information on there about the different types of yarns they have. You can order online if you want. And they only sell in this marketplace in the summer months in Helsinki. So I picked up a few skeins, <laughs> as you do. So I picked up this skein of their Hissy base, which is a 100% finished wool. And um, this is sort of their uh, Aran weight yarn, I guess. It's slightly thicker than a worsted. It's about 160 meters in 100 grams. And this is a 110 gram skein. That's the label. And it's just this beautiful natural, um, natural color. It's undyed. And it's surprisingly soft. Like you wouldn't necessarily think of it as being a particularly soft yarn, but this is surprisingly soft. Which is really nice. And this one, um, I believe, if I remember, they said would is good for um, like house socks and stuff because it's really thickly plied, like densely plied. Um, so I'm just checking the website really quickly here. Yeah, it's a tight twist ply. It's a, it's a five ply worsted weight yarn. I think it's more of an Aran weight because I think 160 meters to 100 grams is more of an Aran weight thickness. Um, and yeah, all of their yarns are hand wash only as well. So that was really cool. And it's made up of a mixture of um, breeds, including fin sheep and crosses with fin sheep. Okay, then we have, I picked up these three mini skeins and this is a, this is their um, Arni face. This one is their soft sport weight yarn. So it's from 100% fin sheep. It's two plies with a loose twist. And there's about 210 to 220 meters and 100 grams, or per 100 grams. So this is these, um, they recommend this yarn for sweaters and for color work and stuff like that. So I picked up, I didn't have a specific project in mind. So I picked up three colors that I thought would go well together in some sort of a color work project. Um, and I'll just pair it with another yarn um, of a similar sort of weight to use for, um, I don't know, some colour work mittens maybe, or some socks or something. That might be interesting to work with. It's not the softest yarn, but it's pretty soft as far as sort of like natural sheepy wools go. So the green one, because like I said, these are all naturally dyed. So this green one is dyed with Japanese indigo and brown knotweed, which I thought was quite interesting. Uh, the blue one is dyed out of natural indigo, or with natural indigo. And this red one is dyed with cochineal. So really, really pretty colors. And sort of nice sort of heathered colors as well. They're not just, again, not just solid. <coughs> and the next two skeins I picked up were from the Belho base, which is 100% um, finished wool. Again, it's not solely fin sheep, but a mixture of fin sheep, other breeds and mixes. And, um, this is their fingering weight yarn. It's about 350 meters per 100 grams. And I picked up an undyed and a dyed skein. So this dyed skein was, is dyed with natural indigo. And as soon as I saw this blue, I was like, that is just a stunning color. That blue is just beautiful. I mean, they had other beautiful colors as well, but this was the first one I was drawn to, so I went back to it. And I picked up this um, natural gray to go with the blue. And I figured they could go together in a project quite nicely. And I may have to, do a little test swatch with the two colours together to check if the blue bleeds. Um, but it should be okay, I think. Mm. And again, it's not the softest, but it's soft enough. And this again is 100% wool, finished wool. So yeah, that's everything I got in Finland, yarn-wise. Like I said, I did pick up one other little thing. Um, we went to the Moomin shop. <laughs> And if you've watched the, watched the vlog, you'll have heard me say that I've never actually watched the Moomin, so I kind of feel like this whole experience was, well, the Moomin part of the experience was slightly lost on me, considering um, I never really got, I never really got into the Moomins when I was little. So, um, but I know a lot of people who watch the podcast really love the Moomins. So I decided to get a few little things for the giveaway package. So I got, picked up a couple of these little Moomin themed notebooks. Which I thought were quite cute. Sorry, 
you see those there and they're just plain they're just plain notebooks so they're just great to keep in your handbag keep some notes in and on top of that i picked up this cute and these were intended to be charms for like a charm bracelet but you know they've got a lobster claw on them and I, they're tiny enough and i thought that'd be a really cute little progress keeper if it will focus there we go little moomin um oops, sorry <laughs> i need to shake it too much um so yeah so i thought that'd be a cute little progress keeper for someone for whoever wins so these two notebooks the moomin progress keeper the yarn and two bars of chocolate it's currently the finished prize package <laughs> um but like i said i think there's gonna be one more thing that goes into this prize package before i um announce the giveaway and i probably will announce the giveaway the next time i film a podcast just because um like i said i don't have anything with me and yeah there we go pop that in there all right, so that was it for acquisitions. Again, quite a bit, but like I said, mostly stuff that came, a lot of things came in the mail while I was gone and um, I got distracted by yarn in Finland because, you know, you tend to do that. Um, so I'm just gonna take a quick little break here just for a second so I can reorganize myself and I will be back. Right, back now. So as you guys know that we've been, or I've been hosting, a few uh, knit alongs in the group at the moment. So we have the sweater cow that's going on, that's ongoing for the rest of the year for now. And um, like I said, the chatter and FA threads are in the group. So you can just go over there and check out the rules and come join the fun. There are some really interesting and really fun um, sweaters that are being knit, garments, cardigans, jumpers, whatever you want to call them. If it's something that you wear that's a garment and not an accessory, then it counts. So pop on over and um, enter for a chance to win i'll be joining the next prize winner at the end of september so you have until then to get your prize get your entries in and for the next drawing um the next up we have the summer blanket blitz knit along which is being co-hosted by myself and shannon of the socks etc podcast i know shannon has also been having an incredibly busy summer so um we've both been sort of just running this quite casually and I'll be um, giving away a few mini skein sets. Uh, I showed you a couple on a podcast a few weeks back before I came to London. And I think I'll probably be putting together a couple more because there are some amazing, amazing um, progress being made in that thread in the group. And I've been really enjoying catching up with everyone's um, progress. I'm not particularly chatty in the group just because I don't have a lot of computer time at the moment whilst I'm away. So, um, but I do read everyone's um, messages and comments and that also goes for the introduction thread I, I forgot to mention this earlier I do read everyone's introductions in the introduction thread I've just stopped replying to them all now because I, I'm starting to feel like my response is being very repetitive and very much the same thing every time but I do read them all and I really appreciate you guys taking the time to introduce yourselves um, and then we also have the sugar plum sugar plum cow which is going until the end of August so I'll be drawing prizes for that once I get back to Bahrain um, or at the end of August when I'm in Bahrain so you have a couple more weeks left to enter for um, to win for that one and it's quite a simple really easy short project um, pattern that I designed so even if you haven't started yet you probably still have enough time to get one done um, next up I'm going to be talking quite a bit about Post Stitch and the collaboration I've done with them because it's starting to come to a head now and um, I have a really exciting giveaway for you guys. So um, so yeah, so you all know by now that I'm doing a collaboration with the lovely ladies of Post Stitch and well I can finally tell you now that September, and I don't know if I already mentioned this or not, but September is the month where um, the subscription boxes are going to have my signs in them. So the lovely ladies at Post Stitch got in touch with me and they have been super, super generous and have offered to give away one box of each of the subscriptions that they offer. So the three subscriptions they offer is the Big Stitch, Big Stitch Lite and the Sock Stitch box. And so I've been given one of each box for the September month to give away to you guys. So I'm just going to run over really quickly what you get with each box and what how much the subscription is. So the Big Stitch box is um, $60 per box, or you can sign up for three or six month prepay options. And each month you receive all the necessary tools, so needles, 
stitch markers, any other sort of tools that you'll need um, to knit one woman's accessory project from start to finish. Um, obviously including the pattern and the yarn and everything else that you need. So this includes, yeah, so it says, each big stitch box subscription includes a printed pattern, yarn and the yardage called for by the pattern, needles and notions. Um, so it's really good value for what you get as well. And um, and as most of you know as well, um, as I've talked about it, which is the freeze is the yarn dyer um, and we'll be providing the yarn for these boxes as well. And his, his yarn is beautiful and really lovely to work with. Then there's the sock stitch box and that's $40 one box and again they also have three or six month subscription option and each sock stitch subscription includes a printed pattern um a premium yarn in the yardage called for by the pattern special notions when applicable and um so again a similar sort of setup and the big stitch light is also 40 dollars a month and this is us dollars i should have said that us dollars and the, this is a variation of the big stitch subscription so each month you receive a adult women's accessory project kit and I could tell you for this one they are worth them there are two um, project options for this one uh, for this month and um, it's worsted weight yarn so it's whereas the big stitch box is fingering weight the big stitch light box will be worsted weight for September just because I know I've designed the, the patterns for it um, and yeah, it's just so you know, because as they've mentioned, this is on their website as well. I'm just getting, I want to make sure I get all the information correct. They say that their sub September, their September subscription box is um, for Big Stitch. So for the larger a box is their biggest box yet. So it's pretty exciting. Um, and you have until the 31st of August to sign up for their September box subscription. Um, so if you are interested in doing and they will also be hosting a knit along in there in the postage group for the um for all the boxes for the patterns in the month of september as well so um i don't actually have the designs with me the finished objects to show you today because um it was a tactical decision on when i was packing to decide whether or not to bring them with me but what i will be doing is as soon as i get back to Bahrain, like i said um Come back to this in a second but when i get back to Bahrain, i'll be short, shooting a short video about 10 to 20 minutes long just to introduce you to the patterns and explain them a bit better and show them to you in more detail um which will go up by next friday hopefully and i'm just going to show you some pictures of the designs in a moment um, um anyway so what i'm going to do for the giveaway is i'm going to set up a thread for the giveaway and the prompt will be to let me know which box slash patterns you would like to knit um or you would like to receive slash knit and i will draw three winners next wednesday um i actually land back in bahrain next wednesday morning so probably by wednesday afternoon i will have um drawn the prize winners and i will contact the winners directly i'm not going to be podcasting next wednesday I'll explain more at the end of this section but i will contact the winners directly because there is a time frame on this i need to get your names to um, Megan at Postage by the end of next week in order to get you guys on the, in order for her to be able to get your information from you in time for the, the packages to go out with everyone else's subscriptions. That's the word. Um, so the September subscriptions get sent out on the 1st of September. So you'll have, you, you still have time to sign up, like I said, until the 31st of August if you want to get a box. Um, further, if you have already signed up or you do sign up for a subscription and you enter, you can still win. Um, and what the ladies said that they would, what Megan said they would do is they will just refund you the cost of the subscription for the month of September if you happen to be a winner and you've already subscribed. Um, so I will include links to where you can sign up if you are interested in the episode thread and in the um, show notes. Um, and like I said, this is, I'm just going to explain this now. Um, I'm not going to be podcasting next week when I get back to Bahrain because, like I said, I get back Wednesday morning. I know what I'm like. It's an overnight flight again. I have a layover in Dubai. I'm not going to be in any state to do a podcast when I get back. I'm going to be pretty knackered. So um, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be with it well enough on a Wednesday to film anything. So I, I'm writing off Wednesday right now. Thursday morning, we Perry and I have plans already. Um, 
it was like a pre-arranged thing before we left for the summer so i can't change that oh geez this big fly just flew in all right so it's a fly's not a bee i'm okay <laughs> i had a moment um what was I saying? Yeah, so we have something pre-planned on the Thursday that I can't change, and I'm not. Sh and I'm hoping the Thursday afternoon I will be able to film the introduction to the designs that I want to talk to you a bit about now. Um, so I'm not going to have time to podcast again on Thursday, and then Friday is the last day that I have with Perry before he leaves again. <laughs> he leaves on Saturday for another week to two weeks in New York. Um, so um, Friday is really the last day we have before he leaves so um I, i'm not gonna want to film that day either i don't think so i'm taking i'm making the decision now that i'm not going to film a podcast next week but like i said i'm gonna have at least i'm gonna have the video about these patterns going up and i'm also getting the video for beyond vanilla socks part two ready that will be out this week as well and so will the patterns i am determined those patterns are going to be out by this weekend because they've been ready since the beginning of august and it's just been bugging me that i haven't had time to sit down and do it um so those will be coming out as well so you will have two videos between now and the next time i podcast coming out so hopefully that fills the gap right so now i'm going to show you the patterns <laughs> I've been going on and on about them and haven't actually shown you anything yet. So, okay, flies really bug me. And, okay, so this is gonna be the big stitch design. This is a shawl that I've designed. And I'm not sure how clearly you guys are gonna be able to see this on the computer, I'm just gonna, gonna try and do this. So, there we go. You can kind of see it there. So it's a large shawl. It's got four wedges. So, um, and it's got an applied border. You can't really see it too clearly in there, but it's a cabled border. And at the the joints, the joints, the spines, the three spines there on the shawl has a sort of a very simple sort of twisted stitch cable as well. Um, the actual body of the shawl is all in garter stitch. Only only these spine sections are done in stockinette and the applied border is all in garter stitch so it's almost an entire garter stitch um shawl so there's minimal purling um and i really like the texture that the cable border has given and this one is uh, actually you know what? i'll give you the names at the very end and then the sock stitch box is going to be this sock pattern i came up with um and as you can see, there's a bit of a purple stripe in there because I misunderestimated how much yarn I had of the main colour and just popped in a stripe of the purple to get the foot long enough, which I actually think worked out pretty well. And I like how that looks. But um, obviously, I've, I have that noted in the pattern as well, so you guys can make that adjustment if you want to. Um, and then for the Big Stitch Light, I designed two patterns, so I'm not sure... I think you probably get both options in the box or you might only get one I'm not entirely sure but the first one is a cowl and it's got two different cables in the cowl so you've got a big chunky one and then a smaller braided one and again so that's on both sides and then there's a hat which also has there's, there's the hat and the hat also has the folded brim uh, feature that I've been starting to use in all my hats and it's got again it's got the big chunky cable and it also has the same it has both cables that are in the cowl are also in the hat it's just that particular photo was only showing the one cable um so yeah and i've had the inspiration for this collection has been something i've been thinking on for a long time actually even before the ladies at post stitch got in touch with me i already had the the framework of this collection in my mind i was working on it mentally and when they got in touch with me, I was like, I think this will be a perfect match for that. And um, so the inspiration behind it is actually my Aunt Mariam, who passed away a couple of years ago now from, she uh, she suffered from Alzheimer's. But um, the reason being, like growing up, I've always associated my Aunt Mariam with knitting. She was always the one person that I knew of as being the knitter in our family, in my mum's family. I mean. I've since learned that a lot of my aunts and some of my cousins knit as well, or did knit, um, 
when I was really little but a lot of the memories that I have of the knitwear that I was gifted or given as a child and or that I wore in photos and I remember my mum always saying that oh yeah Aunt May I made that for you and so that was always something that I remembered and she was never around in Nutley she lived in Canada and so you know and I always wanted to learn to knit but she wasn't around at a time when I was at an age where I was more aware and like wanting to learn to knit to be able to teach me and you know by the time I got to that age and she was suffering from Alzheimer's and it wasn't really possible for her to teach me um, but the other thing that I always really associate with her is um, uh, braiding like hair braids and plaits she taught me how to braid my hair like doing a proper French braid and she taught me how to do that when I was about eight I remember she came to London for a visit and she taught me how to do it so I have always associated that with her as well and the last thing I associate with is the colour yellow she loves amber she always wore amber jewellery and it's something that my mum's take, gotten from her as well she my mum loves yellow as well and amber and things like that so that's again so those are the three things I really associate with my aunt Mariam and I wanted to do something to um represent that I guess and that's kind of what this collection is it's that is a representation of that and I kind of wanted to um yeah I just wanted to do something that would honor her memory I guess the memory that I had of her and um and yeah <laughs> I'm gonna start crying in a minute if I keep going and getting all a bit emotional about it but anyway so that's the story behind those patterns and they will be um released on Ravelry on the 1st of September same as when the boxes go out for the subscriptions so um, you can you can sign up for the boxes and then the patterns will also be available on Ravelry um, so I think that's everything for that post stitch giveaway information so like I said I will be putting a thread up in the group the thread will close on Wednesday next week at whatever time I remember to close it, there's not going to be a specific end date, it's just going to be Wednesday at some point I will close it, um, or ending time, I mean, just because right now I, I don't know where my head's going to be at, but it has to be closed on Wednesday because I need enough time to get in touch with you, the winners, to get your um, information to be able to pass on to the ladies at Post Stitch, so um, they can get the packages out to you in a timely manner. Um, okay. So I'm just going to pop over to the Q&A thread and see what questions we have in there. I think there's only one question. Okay. So yeah, there's one question from Nettie062. And it's Jeanette from Canada. And she says, um, I have recently started knitting two at a time socks from two separate little cakes. What I need help with is getting rid of the twisters. Sorry, as I go along. My favorite trick for relaxing the twist when working from singles is holding the cake and dropping the work and letting it unwind. The other thing I try to do is alternate which way I turn the yarn around in order to eliminate twists in the first place. Two at a time, however, is a whole new ball game. I may be guessing that's one of the reasons people don't do it in the first place. I've even tried to put the cake into a finished sock with the working yarn end of the cake facing the bottom of the sock and let the cake dangle to release the twist. But the weight of it still lets the yarn come out of the skein and it won't untwist. Like when you test your bobbin to see if the tension is good and the bobbin case just goes down slowly like a yo-yo. Um, okay, I, I get the point that she's saying. She's not talking about when the yarn twists with each other when you're working two at a time. She's talking about the yarn itself. As you're pulling it from the center pull of the cake, sometimes it gets kinky and it kinks back in on itself. And she says, I dislike letting twists disappear into my work. Worried the sock might twist up my ankle. So I don't actually have anything to demonstrate this point. But I get what she's saying. So when you pull the yarn out of the of a center pull ball, sometimes you'll notice it kinks back on itself. Like it's um, it can get quite kinky. You have to keep straightening it, straightening out, and that's because it's got extra twist in it. I've noticed that happens sometimes with certain yarns. Actually, if you do watch my how to knit socks two at a time video, um, you'll notice that my yarn does that. My yarn does that in the video. It kinks back on itself a lot, and that was a wool nice yarn. I know there's some some brands do it. I think it's to do. It happens partly, I think, to do with um, the direction the yarn is plied and how you wind the yarn, like which direction you wind your yarn on your ball winder. Because you can wind, you can you can know you can turn the ball winder handle either forwards or backwards. Like it doesn't matter which direction you turn it, but that could affect the twist that's put into the yarn when you put it in and how it's pulled out. Um, 
I personally, honestly, I don't really worry about it. I have to be quite honest. I have never sat there trying to untwist the yarn. Um, it's never bothered me that much and my socks don't twist when I wear them. Um, I know what you're saying that some, you know, it might, you're worried that it, it could cause like a warping in how the fabric fits around your leg when you wear it. But um, I don't feel like it's made that much of a difference in the sock fabric of my socks. When I wear them, I've never noticed that they twist up my leg or that I have to keep straightening them out. They're just fine. So um, I'm not entirely sure what to tell you, to be honest, in terms of how to fix it, because I've never tried to fix it, if that makes sense. It's just not been something that's bothered me. Um, but if anyone else out there has a solution uh, for how to untwist twist the yarn, um, when you're working two at a time socks, I would be very interested to hear it and I'm pretty sure uh, Nettie would as well. So um, if you do have a solution to that issue then please do get in touch in the episode thread, I would love to hear it. Um, okay, now let's see where are we at. I think that's pretty much it really. We can review, I am really, don't really have much to add to be honest because um, I put up a couple of videos. So the Helsinki vlog pretty much covers most of last week. And then I was in Brighton this last weekend for a hen party, which I realise some of you in the US may not know what a hen party is. It's a bachelorette party. One of my best friends is getting married next weekend and she had her hen slash bachelorette party this last weekend in Brighton. So me and the rest of our friends all went down for a lovely weekend in Brighton just to hang out and chill out. It was a very relaxed hen party, I must say. Um, not as crazy as it can sometimes get. But it was a lot of fun and on the Saturday we went out along the beach, had some fish and chips and um, we were due to go sailing <laughs> in the afternoon and we got down to the pier, down to the marina and got on the boat, everything was great, we just got out of the harbour and as soon as we got out of the harbour um, we had to turn around and come back because there was a problem with the engine. So we, we didn't even get to go anywhere. In the end, we just sat on the boat, drank some Prosecco and ate some snacks whilst um, whilst we were moored up in the in the marina before we left. So that was a bit of a shame that we couldn't actually go sailing, but we still had a good time. And I did put up a quick little three, three four minute uh, video clip on the, um, on YouTube. It's, that was just from the Saturday. It didn't cover the other days that we were there. But um, but yeah, it was just a really nice weekend hanging out with friends. And I've since getting back to London on Sunday afternoon, just been busy catching up with family and seeing, doing, get, running some errands and just getting some stuff done. But um, but yeah, so I think that's it for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, it seems to it feels like it's a longer episode than the last couple have been. So um, I hope you enjoy it. And like I said, I won't be seeing you next week, but I'll be seeing you the week after. But there will be a couple of videos between now and then. So till next time, thank you so much for joining me. Take care and have a lovely week. Bye.